So Lucy Liu is saying despite her success, she still feels boxed in by stereotypes. In a recent op-ed in the Washington Post, she responded to a writer who called her Kill Bill character a quote-unquote dragon lady, saying she felt the only reason for that label was her race. So here's the question. Where's the line between stereotypes and representation? Well, Jess, I think it's fascinating because, listen, Tarantino is a great filmmaker and Kill Bill's really movie really, where he takes all these different genres and kind of chops it all together and it's all coming out of his own fevered imagination. But Lucy Liu's point is well taken because that whole concept of a dragon lady, there's other women in the film who are bold and strong and yet yeah. she's being demonized with this Asian stereotype. So I was reading this article about Asian Americans and it's fascinating because, first off, Asian Americans is a very broad term. There's so much that encompasses Asian Americans because there's South Asian Americans. Americans. There's, you know, East Asians. There's uh, all sorts of different types. And the problem is this. The stereotype, if I say to you Asian American, the first things that come to mind for a lot of people are affluent because Indian Americans have an average median income of $100,000. But if you look at other types of Asian Americans, it's $36,000. Is it Southeast Asian, uh, excuse me, Southeast Asians, the median income is $36,000. Again, Asian American or Asian Canadian, what do you think of? Submissive, uh, polite, uh, hardworking, great student. And Lucy Liu is saying, no, those are not true. And this character is bold, and all of a sudden I get demonized for that. I was talking to an Asian American friend of mine, and she said, because of the image of Asians being so docile and submissive, I'm purposely loud and garrulous and obnoxious at times mm. to try to overcome those stereotypes. So it's very frustrating when people try to put you in a box because more often than not, it's not only accurate, it's not only inaccurate, it's unfair. Huh. And you and your, like, you know, you have a front facing job, Adnan. And you know, I think that we, you know, live in an environment, especially in North America, we've been conditioned by imagery, um, and that's what stereotypes are. And we picture certain people in certain roles. Um, and I have been conditioned by that, too. So when I close my eyes and think of sports broadcaster, in particular, a wrestling, a wrestling commentator, <laughs> I'm not seeing in my mind, I apologize, this is the conditioning, <laughs> I don't see in my mind a South Asian man. And yet here you are living your best life uh, like ringside WWE. <laughs> so have you in your profession, sports broadcasting, been stereotyped and boxed in? Have you had that experience? Well, first of all, I don't blame you, Lainey, for being a little bit uh, surprised by me being ringside for WWE Monday Night Raw. I'm as surprised as anybody with my diminutive, uh, unathletic, unphysical stature. But <laughs> yes, in, 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 in my career, there's definitely been moments people meet me and they immediately go, oh, you're Asian American. I go, well, actually, I'm Canadian, but yeah, sure, fine, we'll go with that. And they go, oh, so you must like cricket. And I go, uh, no, I mean, my parents are, yeah, Pakistani, <laughs> but I didn't grow up playing cricket, watch cricket, I don't know cricket. And they go, well, you must like basketball. You're a young guy or a minority. I said, well, actually, I love baseball. Oh, oh, that's different. That's more for Latins. That's more for uh, Caucasians. So I've definitely had moments where people meet you and they're already pigeonholing you. And there's no uh, sense of malice here, by the way. I should make that clear. I think they're being genuine. They're trying to find a, an entry point to go, oh, I have a friend who's Indian. You must like cricket. And I go, mm, no, that's actually not my thing. So I found that it's the best way to disarm people is with humor. At the same time, make your point across that I know you see me a certain way, but I'm not that way. I'm my own person. And Nira, yeah. I think about Do you have any thoughts on this. Sorry. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm not like Annette. I work in radio, so you just hear my voice. And I did it to myself, actually. I, I, I was. I was so adamant, and I think I had these preconceived notions in myself that I wanted to be known just as a broadcaster. I did not want to be labeled as a South Asian broadcaster, and I don't know why I felt that way. I'm still doing that internal struggle and trying to figure out where that was coming from, but now I'm actually, I'm proud if, if I am called a South Asian broadcaster because so much has come along the way, and when it comes to Lucy Liu and her feeling those stereotypes and her going, well, no, I was trying to pave the way. I needed to take some of these roles so that I could get in, fit in, and then bigger roles were coming my way. And that's exactly how I feel. Like there was a time, you know, when it's our birthday on the show, my co-host actually asked me, hey, Nira, do you want the Stevie Wonder version of Happy Birthday or do you want the Punjabi remix with the Bhangra Beat Happy <laughs> Birthday? And I straight up now say, play the Punjab, like the Punjabi <laughs> remix Happy Birthday. Is it a stereotype? <laughs> yes, but does it make me feel empowered now because I have been able to make that decision? Someone is not playing it for me. My co-hosts are 
they're they're along the ride with me of this empowerment. And when we play it, people know I'm South Asian and I'm proud of it. And with these stereotypes, sometimes we're using them as a way of empowerment and moving up. And Mindy Kaling is like the main example that I use here. Like when she was on The Office, the Diwali episode is my favorite episode. Was mm -hmm. it a full on stereotype? Yes. But is it, a, a, is it an example of what my community is? Yes. From all those stereotypes, did she get the Mindy Project? Yes. Again, all the stereotypes heightened, exaggerated. But I'm proud of what she was able to do because she has paved the way. And if you empower those stereotypes, then maybe that's how we'll get rid of them. And to Nira's so point, guys, I first started... Yeah, I'm so I, interested sorry, I was just in hearing both point. of you speak about this. Oh, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, to Nira's point, I started at Omni. My first honor job was doing Bollywood Boulevard, which is like, all right, Yay! Indian movie show. <laughs> and, 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 and to Nira's point, you have to embrace it. You say, listen, I'm trying yes. to get a job as a sportscaster, but no one's going to hire me. We do an opening for Bollywood Boulevard. Okay, I'm yes. with that Here we go. I'll I might it. get my mom. I'll do it. Let me just get in here for a year and a half, and then I'll transition to what I want to do. And you do it with pride. You don't, you don't be frustrated by it. You do it. You own it. You move on. I, you know, I'm listening to both of you speak, and both of you are, you, you know, you broadcast in on, with your voices. Like, you know, Adnan, you have a podcast. Nira, you're on the radio. I also have a podcast. And not too long ago, uh, after someone had listened to my podcast and then uh, saw a photo of me, I got a message saying, wow, you know, I listened to your podcast. I didn't know what you looked like. I didn't expect you to be mm -hmm. Asian. Have, has yeah. that ever been your experience? Like it, when yeah. we're talking about stereotypes and how you sound and matching what you look like with how you sound? Oh, well, near enough, sure. sometimes it's, it's the worst within your own community. I would be able to talk with, you know, fellow uh, Indians or Pakistanis, and maybe the worst go, oh, well, you know, you sound pretty white. I'm like, what's that supposed yeah. to mean? Like, am I supposed to have an <laughs> accent? Near, you've heard that before, right? Totally true. And this is because I grew up on the island, I, and, and I know a lot of people understand, and it, it, I wasn't white enough for my non-BIPOC friends, but I wasn't brown enough for my Indian crew oh. when I moved to the Lower Mainland. And then going on the radio, I think that's where my struggle was. I really just wanted to be known for me. And uh, But now I realize, hey, Indian is me, and, and that's okay. But it's funny, one of the main things when people see me, they don't expect me to be so short. The biggest thing, they're like, we thought you were like way bigger, way oh, taller. Yeah. Man, your voice can blow. <laughs> I'm awesome. right there with In the TV experience, you get that a lot. You know, yeah. just can attest to when people meet us, they're like, wow, you're, we thought you were bigger, as in bigger. <laughs> yeah. And I don't, we don't know what to tell. We always say yeah. we don't know how to take that. Like, I, I, I don't do? know. Um, okay. It's like